Hey everyone! So before we jump into today's video, I'm excited to announce that my brand new watercolor booklet, A Beginner's Guide to Watercolor, is finally up on my Etsy shop. I worked super hard on this thing and it covers everything you need to know as a beginner and some things that you may already know as an intermediate but need a couple refreshers. So head on over to my Etsy shop right now and go on and check it out. So let's jump right into the video. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to show you how to make two different floral bouquets using a limited palette using only four colors. So let's do it! Okay, so for today's video, I've decided to challenge myself to create a floral piece using a limited palette. I'm only going to be using four colors to create new colors by mixing. So I'm going to be using cadmium yellow hue, intense blue, cadmium red deep hue, and permanent rose. So I have my primary colors plus a pink. So if you're looking for colors to start with, I definitely suggest these four. Okay, so... The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to swatch out colors so I can get a feel for what color palette I want to use. So I'm just going to move this piece to the side and I'm just going to start mixing. So I have some pink here, some permanent rose. I'm going to put over here and I'm going to put one over there. Wash off my brush. I'm going to create a nice coral by adding a bit of yellow, maybe a bit more pink. And then I'm going to hmm, maybe add a bit more red to this to create a brighter pink. Okay, and the first one I think I'm gonna use um, pinks and oranges and yellows and purples. And then I'm gonna do another floral one using different colors. So here's that red and pink mixture, which is nice and bright. I think more pink in this one. Here's a coral mixer mixture, which is kind of similar. I'm going to add some pink to this one to get a nice orangey yellow. And then maybe I'll add a bit more. That's kind of the same as that, eh? To get a brighter orange, okay? So I think for my first floral piece, I'm going to be using an analogous um, palette, which basically means that on your color wheel, analogous colors are three to four colors that sit next to each other on a color wheel. So I have yellow, orange, maybe a darker orange and red, or you could do red, magenta, and then going into purples. You could do purples and blues and then green. So they're just three or four colors that sit next to each other on a pa on your color wheel. And that's gonna create a really pleasing look um, by having that kind of palette. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, so I'm gonna use those colors for the petals and now I'm gonna mix some greens. So I'm gonna take, I have some blue here. Uh, and I'm gonna put some more blue here. This is a new palette that I have, so it's just, the water's gonna beat on it a bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna create a bright green by adding more yellow, and then I'm just gonna take my brush from here and add it to this one so it's a darker green. So let's just swatch that. I actually really like the colors together. There, wash it off, and there, okay? So there's my planned out palette for my, so there's my planned out palette for my first floral piece and let's get painting. Okay. And if you look there, none of these colors are the colors that I actually have in these tubes, right? They're all mixed colors. So I've created six new colors by mixing those four colors. So let's start. Okay. So I'm going to take this corally color and I'm just gonna start off with a peony here. So I'm gonna do some curved shapes. You may need to remix some colors 
which is fine if, if you don't have enough. And I'm using B watercolor paper today for this, just in case you were wondering. And my brush is Princeton Snap Brush, and it's a size 12. I'm just gonna create some lines on top here with the tip of my brush, and then some larger curves. Now, I don't know if you can tell this, but it's starting to, to pool a little bit, so I'm just gonna dry off my brush and then pick up some of that color. Or you could always use your paper towel because it's hard to get colors to bleed properly if there's a puddle or pool of water. Then I'm just gonna go back in with my darker pink. That. Like so. Now I'm gonna take this more orangey color. the pink, I mean this reddish color with the pink. It's pretty dark, so I'm gonna keep the darkness in the middle. I'm gonna do a rose. And as I'm going out to the outer petals, I'm just gonna take some of that color off to get a lighter wash. I'll even connect it to the peony a bit. Okay, like that. Okay, there we go. And now I am going to create one more smaller rose there and I think I'm gonna do a lighter, like orange. I'm just gonna turn my paper around and I'll do one with longer petals. in this part and I'll let it bleed into that one like that go back in with some darker yellow towards the center like that there we go and now I am going to use my greens for the petals so I'm gonna create more hmm I need to bring some yellow over there I really like this Okay, see that's what happens when you have way too much paint on your brush. Then you can just lift it up just like that. It happens, I was not judging how much I had on there. And I've been really shaky lately, just, hmm. So I'm just gonna go over it. It happens, and now this is a little bit, has a little tad of green in it, but it's okay. Okay, we fix it, we fix it. Take a little bit less on your paintbrush. There you go. That's the kind of bleed you want. <laughs> it happens to all of us. See? And I'm just gonna do some. Now this turned out to be a bit more of a green. I want a bit more blue in there to get kind of that turquoise color. Now, while I enjoy um, B paper for a lot of my practice work and I'm using it right now um, I still recommend arches paper for florals like this you just get the best results and like what I'm finding right now it just doesn't soak into the paper the way that arches does and then you do get these little color bleeds a lot more often so just keep that in mind it's not a bad paper to have I love it and I try and use it in my videos because I know not everyone has arches. So, but it does make quite a difference, paper quality. I'm just trying to see where I wanna put these leaves. Also, when the, when the paint doesn't soak in very well to the paper, that's when you get those pools and then you'll have that problem where you get too much water and it runs into another one, like that whole mistake happened. That was, my bad, but it also doesn't help when you don't have the proper paper. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do this. Lighter greens. See, and then it dries unevenly when this happens. If you've watched my water 
control video, just move that color around again evenly so you don't get those funky watermarks. There you go. Okay. And I think I might just add some yellow. There's orange buds here. Maybe some bright red too. I think I'm going to use a smaller brush though. bigger red buds. Like that. Then I'm going to take my green and I'm going to try and create stems to these little buds. Now, if the green is taking over some of those buds, you can just mop them up like that. That happens. Okay. Then you can go back in there with your yellow. Like that. Okay. And there you go. There's one floral piece. Oh, I wanted to do a center of this one, but let's get a orange happening, a darkish orange happening here. It's okay if it bleeds out. There you go. There is my first floral piece. <laughs> There's my first floral piece using a very limited palette, creating all new colors, okay? And by using an analogous palette, again, three or four colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel, so maybe those four or those four, you get something that's really pleasing to the eye. And especially if you add like a bright green in there to kind of contrast that, it looks really nice. So also what you can consider is that green is a complementary or contrasting color to red. So when you put a green by a red analogous uh, palette, you'll get something that really stands out and pops, okay? So there's the first one. Um, I will do one more just for fun, okay? And I am going to create a new color palette here using my B watercolor paper again. And I think this time we're gonna create more blues. I think I'm gonna have greens and purples in there, but blues and purple, I don't know. Well, let's just see how this goes. So <laughs> I'm gonna put my blue over here. So I'm gonna create another. The tough thing about using a new palette when it beads up, I find a lot of the water will stay on your brush rather than in your palette, and that's not what you want. I take some yellow to create that green over here and get it off my brush so I can save it. Then I'm going to start creating some purples. And if you've watched my video, which should be coming out, it is already out, I can't speak, um, on warm and cool colors, you know that mixing a red and a blue together to get a purple can be really difficult if you don't have the right combination. I have a very, I have the right red, I have a a cool red but the blue I have is more on the cooler side and you want a warmer blue if that makes sense so instead of mixing blue and red to get a purple I'm gonna be mixing blue and pink and it makes a very 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 nice color of purple and you can get a bunch of different tones so let's see what kind of purples we can get there's one purple we can make it a bit more purple by it or more blue we can make it way more pinky by just adding more pink. Okay. And this will be a really nice color palette. All right, with some greens. So I'm gonna start off with these three colors and then I'm gonna add those same greens. So again, I'm just gonna do the same kind of um, bouquet shape. Uh, so we'll do our peony again. Do our petal shape there and then some curves around. Do our lines at the top here. And then some curve shapes. And 
like that. Okay, then I'm going to add some more blue to that area, grab some more pink. And we're creating several different types of purple just with two colors, the same two colors, just in different amounts of each, if that makes sense. Okay, so it's pretty cool how that works. I'm just going to add more. I think I'm going to make this one a bit more pinky. You can always add a bit of red too. See what happens, make it a bit more pinky. Get a different shade. Play around. Mm, not a big fan of that one. Oh, but that was my pink. <laughs> Let's move it over here. Okay. Should I turn my paper? It's all good. Like that. Okay. Maybe I'll do some little like lavender sprigs. That. I'm going to do some over here. Okay, then I'm going to go in with my greens. And I feel like if we mix more blue into these greens, it will go better with this palette. I think we can get more green in there. There's so much water on my brush. It's this palette. It's because it's not staying on the palette, so all of the paint is being lifted up into my brush. And I'm not used to it, so I'm not wiping it off like I should be. Okay, and then we're gonna do a bit of a more yellowy green. Because purple and yellow are complementary colors, so a bit more of the yellow should be a nice little pop for this color palette. You could always just do yellow leaves too. Whatever you think looks best. Okay. Add a bit more yellow. Let's wash off our brush. Pick up some yellow to get that contrasting color in there with purple. Just put a little bit of it. Maybe I'll do the center of this one, this flower yellow. Like that, a bit of red. like that. And then I'm just going to do the stems for some of these really quickly. Just going through those little buds, touching gently for a slight color bleed. Okay. Because you don't want these little buds floating in space. Okay. But there you go. And you can always just swatch them 
beforehand to see what they look like, but I kind of knew what the greens look like. But there you go. And I think we're done. So look at the amount of different colors that you can make with a limited palette. So the next time you feel like you need to go out and buy like a ton of different colors, stick to four and just have fun mixing them. That is one of my favorite things to do is mixing them. And then mixing greens out of this using different amounts of the blue and the yellow together. Also try adding, adding a bit of red because a bit of a tiny bit of red will mute it down a bit and you can create a beautiful olive green. You can create a darker green by uh, mixing the purple with the green that you've created. Just, there's so many options. So just wanted to show you that it is possible. And that's about it. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more. Have a great day guys. Bye.